anything I can do to make Mrs. Reader's life easier, I will do happily because, and I'm completely serious when I say this, Mrs. Greeter is an angel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. She is an angel who's come down to the earth, doing good deeds, sowing the seeds of goodwill, and making applesauce. <laughs> There's another reason why Rex must go to the potty before entering the nursery. This is because he did it yesterday, and the day before, and the day before. And if you know what's good for you, you do not mess with the routine of a four-year-old. So, I have to take him to the bathroom. That's all there is to it. The first thing we must do is take off his mittens. Then we take off his coat. Then we take off his snow pants, then we take off his scarf, then we take off his hat. This takes approximately eight to nine years. <laughs> if I fail to remove even one of the previously listed items, come in, my dears, come in and close the door. If I fail to remove even one of the previously listed items, it will be peed on. <laughs> That's just the way it is, man. It'll get peed on. <laughs> so during this long, long, very long disrobing, I'm thinking, oh, I've got to get the email off to the parenting group and don't forget to email Gregory Talmont with the specifics of the contract and blah, 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 blah. And Rex is going, oh, I'm working up the way. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for Rex to enter the stall. And now begins this little negotiation that he and I do. He very much wants to go into the stall alone. Totally understandable, right? Sometimes he needs a little help guidance because, let me put it this way, if Rex were a fireman, <laughs> he might be called up onto the carpet for his hose management skills. <laughs> the fire chief would say, the fire chief would say, Rex, you have to hold your hose. You have to hold it so the very powerful water stream will go where you want it to go. The fire chief would say, Rex, you can't just let the fire hose be propped up on your elastic waistband. <laughs> it's not going to work. The fire chief would say, your elastic waistband is bent over, and your hose is just resting on it. There's a very good chance that the waistband will flip up. <laughs> the fire hose will spray everywhere. Either it'll be loose, willy-nilly inside your pants, or it could end up spraying straight up over your chest. And it's And so I stand outside the door, very patiently, trying not to pry, offering little, little bits of encouragement to him over the, the stall, and I wait to see the outcome of this installment of Rex and the Fire Hose. <laughs> One interesting new development recently is that Rex is now insisting that not only can he go into the stall by himself, but he can close and lock the door. He says that Mrs. Fuller said the big boys can do this. I love and trust Mrs. Fuller. But I really hope she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> because I really, really don't want to have to rescue my son by squeezing under the door and stall on the wet, peepee floor. I really don't care. <laughs> if the guidance of said fire hose goes awry and there is an accident, then I must go into the classroom to get his spare pants out of the cubbies while Rex waits for me in the bathroom. I feel horrible when this happens because as soon as I enter, Mrs. Greeter and Mrs. Fuller begin to sing. Through <laughs> <laughs> their angelic voices, and I'm like, yeah, just me. Say it, say it, just me. <laughs> but they can't stop the song once they begin. <laughs> beautiful wave at the ocean, and if you can't interrupt it mid-crest, it must come and pass over me. And so I try to walk very well towards the end of the As I go to his cubby, and Rex says, where's Rex? Rafi says, where's Rex? Which is the question that's on everyone's mind, and I, I try to channel Mrs. Reader, and I say, oh, he'll be here soon, little man. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair and accurate, on most 
most, most mornings, Rex does not have an accident of any kind, comes out of the stall looking like a matador. He's so proud and, and brave that he's accomplished this feat alone. And so then, we begin the hand washing saga. Now, for you, for any one of you to wash your hands, it's like, you know, done, right? It takes about that long. For Rex, hand washing is a sensual experience, a delightful foray into the world of rushing water, foamy soap, dry paper towels. <laughs> for me, it feels like a journey through Elizabeth Kubler Ross's five stages. <laughs> Rexy gets the soap. <laughs> and at first I just feel denial. I can't take, can't take that long to get soap. <laughs> and then Rex is soaping his hands. <laughs> and I feel, I feel anger. <laughs> but hey, they're soaping. They're really soaping. They're soaping everywhere. They're so funny. <laughs> and then Rex is turning on the faucets. And I'm bargaining. I'm at the bargaining stage. Both hot and cold? Honey, I think you just need one. I think you just need one. Don't you, honey? Don't you just need one? And he rinses. And he rinses. And he rinses. And I'm depressed. <laughs> I sneak a look at my Blackberry and I see we're like 20 minutes late. <laughs> Now Rex is pumping the paper towel and says, uh, <laughs> It's even really short, but it has a diagram of an elbow on it. <laughs> and then I just start to accept it. <laughs> this is life with a four-year-old. This is how it is. It's slow, and it's lovely, and sometimes there are accidents and setbacks, but really, it's a better way to experience the world. There's no need to rush. Rex will now enjoy the crinkle of the paper in his hands, and I will enjoy his sheer joy out of the crinkle of the paper in his hands. His innocence and life in this present moment will lead me out of the anxious, dark wormholes in my brain, and he'll lead me back into the world, into the morning at the Green Meadow Waldorf School, where the light is clear and rosy, and I can smell bread baking. I can enjoy the last moment of this morning with my sweet little nutball of a son, my darling Rex. And so I sigh, and I smile, and then I feel a little tug in my coat. And Rex says, Mommy, are you doing a daydream? Because I'm done. I'm ready to go to school. <laughs> <laughs>